Hi everyone, imagine I have a table. Each row shows an item, quantity, price per a unit, and then the total. So the last column are just the totals. And the table also has this element at the end that shows the total price to pay without any discounts. And it just includes the price there, right? There's no selector for the price itself. And your goal is to write a test that would confirm that if you sum up the totals, right, in the column of totals, that it's the price displayed to the user. So there is a little bit of text processing involved. So let me show you how to do this because that's a lot of fun. First, we need to select just the totals, just the cells in the last column. And the way to do this is by having this nice long selector. And the good part about this selector it's really a composition. First, you get the table with ID sales. Then you find in that table, the body of the table. And then inside you find all the cells, but only each four cell. Because each row has the same number of cells, if you take the fourth, right, you get the right cells. And we can confirm it by running this test once. If you hover over command, you see the right items right above me. Perfect. Let's take the cells using that then callback. And now we can parse them, extract the numbers because we want to sum it up. Now the best thing is to just get the totals as floats. And now we can do synchronous operations inside that then callback. This is a jQuery object, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to convert it to an array from jQuery object. Now it's just elements, and now I can map each element and grab just its inner text. And once I have an array of text, I can take each string and remove the dollar sign. Now I have just the numbers as strings, so I need to map them using parts float. And now I just have but totals as numbers. And I can compute the sum using the low dash, which is bundled with Cypress in the browser using its sum function. Okay, uh, let's print it so we know that we're doing the right thing and then the variable sum. Okay, let's see what it prints. So it prints 1277 by adding all those totals. And let's now confirm that the under the table, the ID total element shows that value. Okay, there is an approach, right, where we can do the same thing. We can grab the cell, we can, you know, parse it, and here's how I would do that. I'm going to get the total element, right, and first I'm going to invoke the text, because right now it's jQuery object, and by invoking the text, we're getting the whole text from that element. And then I can uh, remove a dollar character and replace it with nothing. And now we have you know, this whole string, but without a dollar sign. So here's what we can do. We can split this array, but we cannot just call split, right? We are having a string. So if you want to invoke a method on a string, we have to use sci invoke, right? And we can take an empty space, right? Because if you remove a dollar sign, then there'll be just a number surrounded by spaces. And anytime you are in doubt, you can do two things. You can either click on the command to see what it yields. For example, here it has a whole string without a dollar character. And now it has just an array of individual words. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to split it first, all right? Because then here's what I can do. Then I can invoke find because now we're having an array. And so we have a string and I'm just going to find the string that starts with a dollar sign. And then I'm going to place. And then let's just print it, print it, right? Okay, so this is the second way of making sure that your pipeline, a chain of commands, does everything. You know, you throw scilog once in a while. Okay, so we found the right string, right? Now we just have to do the same float, right? Convert it to number. And what's the final thing? It should equal to the sum we computed before. Perfect. The sum of cells in the totals column is equal to whatever this element has inside its text. There is a easier way actually of doing it, right? So 
instead of a whole chain of operation, we can say, okay, our page contains a total right, element, and what's the string inside of it? Well, it should start with a dollar plus have the sum number after it. And so it contains, searches for a substring in the element with that selector and confirms, yeah, you know, 1277 is shown right there. So I actually prefer site contains. When in doubt, site contains is your friend.